Um, so I'm Tasha or Sun Kern. I'm the creative director at the New York, um, which means I take care of all of the kind of creative output of the New York. So that includes the stream, um, any video content, um, photos, graphics, blog content, social media. Um, I'm responsible for, for that and all of the people who help me create it. Um, so my main focus within that role is on the broadcast side of things. Um, particularly because outside of the new all, I'm also a freelance esports stream producer. Um, so I work on Arena Clash and Insomnia, a bunch of other different projects. Um, so it's kind of my favorite thing. Yeah, sounds sounds like you you're definitely uh, into in doing a lot in in that area. So um, the job description that you just mentioned mentioned it sounds really tricky. There's a lot to do. So what would you say your sort of favorite parts and the hardest parts are of the role? The hardest part is probably um, kind of working with. Uh, the league ops side of things and getting players together, planning the broadcasts around the format of the tournaments. So all of our tournaments, almost all of them, have different formats yeah. um, that we have to think of how we're going to stream games and then how we're going to link up with those players, tell them to wait for us, tell them not to just start their game without us because obviously like they start without us and we can't stream them. Um, that's, that's the most challenging part. Um, and then my favorite part is probably when I can just spend like three days making graphics. Yeah. Because um, I just kind of like wake up and I load up Photoshop and I'll just make graphics for like eight hours. And I'll be like, oh, eight hours have passed. I had no idea. Um, that's the best bit. But I don't often get three whole days where I can just make graphics. Yeah, definitely. For uh, in my role as well, like the the best days I I had was while making the stream overlays for all the players and all the teams. You just like you, it seems like you turn on Photoshop and it's five p.m. and you have to go home. Done. Yeah. Easy as that. Yeah. So the reason why I wanted to talk to you uh, for this in series is uh, you guys streamed the TFT tournament. How the hell did you manage to do that? Because there is no spectating mode. Uh, it's not really esports ready in a sense that, you know, uh, it's not designed for tournaments. So can, can you walk me through the whole process of how you did it? What were the steps and uh, why did you decide to do it? So we decided to do it because we ran TFT uh, versus a pilot tournament last summer. Um, we had hundreds of teams sign up and we were like, okay, people are definitely interested in this. So we ran it again as a short format tournament in winter. And again, it did really well. So we were like, okay, what about we run it again? We make it a format that we can do broadcast for, first of all. Um, and then we actually broadcast it. Um, so it took a little while to think of how we were going to do it. Initially, it was like, do we ask the players to stream it? And we make it compulsory like if you want to play in the tournament, you have to be able to stream. But that puts up a barrier to entry, which isn't yeah. really fair. Um, a lot of people will be playing TFT on like laptops and stuff because it, it's not it's not an intensive game, really. Yeah. Um, so our inspiration kind of came from when we were planning our Magic the Gathering stream last winter. Yep. Um, so for Magic the Gathering, we have two virtual machines and uh, an RTMP server, mm -hmm. which is like a video server. Um, and virtual machines, like if, if people don't know about them, are just computers that don't actually really exist. They're kind of just like a server and you remote into it. Um, so we had these two virtual machines for Magic the Gathering and we use a program called Parsec. So the players connect to our virtual machines, which are just constantly streaming to our RTMP server. So their, their video feed is constantly being sent out to the casters and producers. Um, so we took that idea and scaled it up to eight, essentially, for yep. TFT. Um, so we had eight virtual machines, which was a bit of a nightmare to set up. <laughs> um, shout out to uh, Omni Toaster for being like the, pro so he's the product manager for TFT. Yep. Um, he's also our product manager for Magic the Gathering, which is useful because he's the most experienced with setting up the virtual machines and everything. Yep. Um, so yeah, we had eight virtual machines sending out eight different feeds and then 
the producer and the casters were having to essentially vision mix between those eight feeds. Yeah. So like the casters would say who they wanted to look at. Um, the producer would then switch to that feed and then you flick through them. Um, and then, or oh, that was the plan anyway. Yeah. Um, and then by the time it actually came around to it, the RTMP server would only support, despite the test that we'd done, the yeah. RTMP server would only support four feeds. Right. Um, so we had four players using the virtual machines and four feeds, and we were switching between those ones. Mm -hmm. And it worked out quite well because for the most part, the bits that we wanted to spectate were on those four feeds mm. and everyone else was either like doing dragons or wolves or they've been knocked out. Um, so it, it ended up working quite well, but definitely improvements for, for next week. For yeah. next week. So how many people would you say in total were uh, working on, on the stream itself? Um, including like the planning? Yeah. So we had both of the both of our engineers working on it. So Tom and Michael, so that's two. Um, it was kind of Balance's idea to have eight virtual machines. <laughs> and he suggested this last time, last yeah. split, and I was like, I'm not I'm not doing that. Yeah. But we did it. Um, Omnitoaster, who's the product manager, um, Patrick, who produced it, and then two casters who were very patient throughout this whole mm. process where like we didn't have enough feeds also there were some strange things where the virtual machines were screaming trial at us because they were using a virtual audio cable um and for some reason it decided that it wasn't a verified copy of a virtual audio cable so it was yelling at us the whole time yeah. it was the whole thing but um that's probably everyone that was involved um but then obviously there's all um so like deanish yeah because he helps organize the tournament and then all the admins who helped on the night as well uh after doing the first sort of week of tft do you think it's a good viewing experience for the viewers do you think tft works as an esport yeah i think it's a good viewing experience in that um we had a lot of people engaging with it who casually play TFT but are interested in like the way that other people play it um, and especially being able to see the way that eight different people play it at once instead of just watching um, like a single POV stream um, makes it a good viewing experience. I'm not sure about it being much of an eSport mostly because at the moment it's still just a technically it's a game mode within League of Legends it's not a standalone game um, I think it would it would have potential if it had a spectate mode and if it was a standalone game and it was built up a little bit more um, I don't know enough about the game to speak about the competitive side of it though is there any more information uh, where people can go and find out about your streams? Is it like the new Twitch channel, new Discord server, or uh, any other people that uh, TFT fans and sort of broadcasting fans can follow? Is it like following you, following Omnitos, anyone you can give shout outs to uh, so people can follow the scene a bit more? Yeah. So um, the best way to find out when we're doing our TFT broadcasts is to follow our Twitter. So it's at the new. Um, we also will post updates when we're going live in Discord. So that's discord.gg slash the new um, And then our Twitch itself is, again, twitch.tv slash the new um, So it's every Thursday at, I think it's 18.45. Uh, that's GMT. Yep. So that's when we'll be streaming it. And there's uh, two rounds a night, I think, maybe three. Maybe three. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, all right. So, well, thank you very much for uh, for joining us for this uh, interview. I'll leave all the links to to your to new Discord channel to the, the rest of the teams, uh, tw Twitch and Twitter channels and everything like that. So, once again, thanks so much for uh, for joining us today. No worries. Been a pleasure.